You know the drill. Smash like and subscribe for 900 days. Welcome to 800 days on the largest mod pack possible. A video series inspired by Luke the Normal. If we hit 200,000 likes, I will upload 900 days next Saturday. Okay, maybe not next Saturday, but like really soon. Don't worry if you're new. I'm going to do a recap before we start. Or you can watch the previous 700 days below. Also, I need a little bit of help. I need to decorate stuff behind me. Whatever the top comment is, I'm going to put right there. Right on the top top in the middle also in all seriousness regarding the last video i appreciate all the support but like i stated i'm going to continue making videos because i feel better doing something you know so this is me now thank you honestly previously in the last 100 days i completed most of my farms but i still had ways to go i also spent quite a lot of time learning a mod called thomcraft so i can get a specific item but i was unsuccessful these previous 100 days i ended up building a mob farm on top of binos because i was lacking a lot of mob drops like bones from skeletons at the end of 700 days i ended up eating some mystery beans that actually summoned binos and that is where we left off it is day 700 and the great Beanos has been summoned. And why so soon? All I ate were some beans, man. Look at this dude. He was a big slow target, so I went after him, but my ultimate axe didn't do any damage. That's when I realized he was actually taking damage when I redirected his own fireball attacks and he was already down. I was expecting a bigger fight from this guy, but I guess this is good because now I don't have to worry about him anymore. Wait, Beano stage two? Are you saying that he's not even done yet? Do you think it would be that easy? I mean, yeah, I wish. I hope. Oh no, he looks a lot angrier now. I had no idea how strong he was now, and I couldn't risk dying. And on top of that, he had these two floating arms that destroy blocks. My poor castle. Are you serious? I ran away as far as I could. I couldn't have him destroying my base anymore. And when I returned, he was nowhere to be found. At least the damage that he has done is completely minimal. Day 7 to 1, it's time to start making improvements on my base, starting with my farm. The place was looking a little plain, so I had to spice it up a little bit. The goal is to put blocks in between the redstone lamps to give it a little more texture. The next day, I decided to go with stone slabs because it looks the best with sandstone. Sadly, my builder's wand doesn't work with slabs, so I have to place them all manually. I think I made the right choice. It looks a lot better. Day 703, now I I had the place looking nice so it was time to add even more layers of farm because more farming space means more stuff to grow it's looking like a mega farm area now next day i added one more layer because turns out i had the extra room i also had to test that the top layer had enough room in order to grow trees and it did for both different kinds of trees and sorry for no audio for those two clips i was listening to thanos rap battles <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> also, the place is looking really nice from the outside. Day 705 was the fun part because now I had to hook everything up with wires. Red pipes were for the energy and the green pipes are to transfer the items out of the farm. And that's all day's work. Day 706 was even more fun because now I had to hook up all those wires in the back. So they actually go into my storage system. The next day is actually the final day I work on this area for a while because now I actually just had to put in the farms. Probably asking, why do I need so many farms? Well, in modern Minecraft, you can grow anything you want. That's right. If you want to grow a cow, you can grow a cow. That'll be something for the far future, but for now, I'll grow all the essentials like wheat and sugar cane and whatever. The last part was just to add water to all the farms, and they were basically all done. And during the night, I built up these two pillars also in front of the stairs because they look really good. And I think we're done with that farm area for a while. Day 7 and 8, it was time to start planning what I was going to do next, but instead, I messed around with cobblestone. Turns out you can turn cobblestone into more compressed cobblestone and that compressed cobblestone turns into more compressed cobblestone and it just keeps on going i ended up making quadruple compressed cobblestone and i don't know why i'm so proud of myself what an amazing day next day i knew exactly what to do and that was to blow something up i despise this mob grinder i had with the scorpions and rats it was just horrible i mean just look at it there's nothing nice about it so i crafted up some obsidian tnt which is basically tnt on extra juice and boom i let them rip <laughs> Goodbye, mob grinder. I ended up blowing up one, no, two more TNTs just for good measure. Also, what is this? Hero Brian was here? Are you serious? What? Day 710, it was time to continue the great mining spree. Especially with my black hole power source, I basically could mine forever. Talking about my black hole, it has started to destroy blocks near it. That is not okay. This means I have to reinforce the entire place before it just sucks in my entire base. I spent day 11 still working on my black hole by actually giving it more power because I was running out. No power for me is really bad because I can't even use my storage system. And also turns off my mob grinder, which is doing actually really good lately. 
immediately because I'm getting lots of bones. I'm going to worry about my black hole sucking up my base later because I want to work on my armory now. For the next five days, I will continue researching in Thomcraft, which is basically magical rock, paper, scissors. The only reason I'm getting into this mod is because I only want one item from it, an arcane pedestal. This pedestal allows me to float up any item all mysterious like. It literally levitates any sort of item you want on a table like thing. This pedestal will be perfect for the armory that I want to continue working on to display all my weapons and armor. So rather than me explaining 20 hours how this mod works, I'm just going to skip to where I discovered the arcade pedestal. I'm not joking. I spent about 20 hours looking at some Thomcraft wiki and about hours of footage of me trying to get this to work. I even went to a Thomcraft discord where they had a support channel and then I got cyber bullied by Thomcraft people. I'm not going to tell that story unless you guys really want that. But anyway, what are you ready for this? Boom! Floating fish on pedestal. How is that not the coolest thing you have ever seen in your life? It can make any object you want spin around and around like this cool magical sorcery stuff. It's amazing for this armory. Haha, <laughs> you know those giant swords from the twilight dimension? <laughs> Look how funny that looked. Day 717, now it's time to start working my armory, which meant I needed a lot of brick, which meant I needed a lot of clay. I mine clay all day. That rhymes, by the way. The next day, since I had all this clay, I smelted it into bricks and then formed that into actual bricks I could place down. Those bricks into white bricks and started filling in the area because I'm going for this white brick design because it looks crazy good. I used up all the bricks I could have and I could only make so much. Day 719, I started placing in the armor and everything because I wanted to see how it looks and yo, it's starting to come together, but I think it needs a little more something. Maybe I need to go for some sort of hilly design because I don't know where I'm going to be placing in the arcane pedestals. Before I went to bed, I started making this dirt design which would create some sort of texture to the whole armory so that way it wasn't flat. I continued this the next day. Day 721, I made a decision why not have multiple levels of armory so this would be the level of all the overworld items. So turning this dirt into grass is actually a great idea because that's the overworld. Before I take a break on the armory, I just decided to blend in the doorway to the actual entrance that way it looked decent. Oh, that looks pretty bad right now, but I'm gonna work on it later. It was a new day and I wanted to to work on a new mod so why not the Traincraft mod? I don't know why I'm so excited. I read this Traincraft book all day and it turns out I could make actual trains that look like trains. I've really never been into trains but you know how cool it would to have a train station that goes all around my base and to different locations in the world? Probably not very useful but I mean come on train station that sounds epic. Day 723 I forgot about my black hole and I needed to do something about it now before it blew up my base. The first objective was to clear all the blocks around it and replace them with something that's really strong like obsidian. There was also another problem. The black hole was destroying the energy pipes that were actually transferring the energy out of the black hole into my base. I couldn't work through the night because it was a blood moon, but I knew I had to change the energy pipes eventually and find some sort of block to surround the black hole with. I continued clearing out room the next day. Now that I had the space, I started surrounding the black hole with a very tough glass called tritanium glass. It's basically 10 times stronger than obsidian. Day 725, I continue working on my gen generator when I realized I don't like this shape at all. The only problem is that this glass is tougher than obsidian times 10 times 1000. That took the entire day and then I went with a design that I liked a lot more. Next day it was time to make it look nice but also very durable. I ended up using obsidian blocks but they were dyed black so they looked really cool. A lot of squids died that day for the ink sacs that create black dye but it was worth it because now this area looks good and it's really really strong so the black hole shouldn't destroy anything or at least I thought. Day 727 it was time to make the place look nice. Blocks I wanted to use were called factory blocks, but combine that with a chisel, I have endless amount of possibilities. I started outlining this area with these yellow factory blocks. If you step over the yellow line, the black hole will start sucking you in. So this is a good outline of a safe distance where you have to be at. Next day, since the area was looking nice, it was time to attach the controller to all the farms. So I'm actually getting power. I wanted this to be unseen, so I'm going to loop it all the way around. I spent the rest of the day to make sure the farms were getting the power and they were and everything was working fine. Day 729, since there was no problems, I finally wanted to craft up iron seeds. You heard me, plants that grow iron? That's insane. It's expensive, but it'll be worth it. But then the black hole destroyed its own controlling block. Like the actual block that controls the entire system was destroyed by the black hole. I didn't know what to do at this point, so I knew I needed to make a block that protects other blocks from the black hole. The next day I had to go mining for iron because I had no iron to craft up my generator for my black hole 
coal and i also need the iron to craft something called the block protector that should protect blocks from the black hole day 731 was a big day because i had to build this block protector and i had to build a new generator i placed both in and how the block protector works is that i have to select what blocks i want to protect from breaking but the more blocks i select the more energy it needs so it's a trade-off i ended up using it to protect all the important blocks but i have no idea if this is gonna work the next day i really hope what i did worked so i stayed near my farms and just did some maintenance to make sure everything was running smoothly i started building a ceiling because this place didn't have a ceiling yet and yup it didn't work for long there was no more power going through the tubes see for yourself there's no red tube connecting to those yellow and black puzzle pieces above somehow they're still breaking for the black hole even with the block protector there or maybe there's something breaking it that i don't know about day 733 one of my thoughts were mob breaking the red tubes because in this mod pack zombies have the ability to break blocks so my goal here was to craft a torch called the magnum torch yes that is the actual name of this torch according to his description it should disable all mob spawning in a 64 block radius so i just put that right next to my generator i took my mind off all of this breaking block stuff and i decided i wanted to extend my throne room because it's not epic enough which meant i needed a lot of netherrack which was no problem because everything breaks immediately but every five seconds there is something shooting at me or something trying to kill me and it is so annoying after spending that entire day mining i had like three double chests of netherrack even more i also had to smelt up a lot of cobblestone for a lot of stone because the block i need for my throne room is a combination of stone and netherrack that made me thinking i really want a really big furnace room that had like 64 of the fastest furnaces in the world day 736 yeah the pipe broke again honestly i think it has something to do with the pipe so i already researched on something i could replace it with meanwhile i started preparing being able to craft 64 of the fastest furnaces possible the crystal furnace look how much faster the crystal furnace it's already finished all its fish while the obsidian one is still cooking yeah so i'm gonna make 64 of those crystal furnaces but that means i need a ton of iron a ton of gold a ton of obsidian and even a ton of diamonds day 738 i had all the material for the furnaces except for obsidian so i had to do a lot of long mining there was a lot of obsidian laying around but it was next to lava so i was constantly burned but now that i had the material i had 64 crystal furnaces that's a lot of fast furnaces i didn't know how to lay them out so i just put them side by side but it stretched all the way to my castle wall i didn't know how i wanted to set up the furnaces yet so i decided why not just make one train today my goal was to build a certain train that actually puts down its own tracks that's right a train that automatically puts down its own rails so i can just leave it be and it just builds its own path luckily trains are not very expensive they're just kind of confusing with all the different things i need to make and putting all the pieces together and boom track builder train yo i actually made a train i have no idea how this is gonna look like yo that is insane the next day before i had the track builder start building tracks i needed to decide what kind of tracks i actually wanted and what kind of train i wanted i popped into this creative world where i tested different tracks and different trains and i ended up choosing this electric train that can go up to 160 kilometers per hour the only problem is since it's an electric train that means the rails itself need power so that means i need to get my power source under control so i have to replace these red pipes because they keep on breaking from the black hole so i'm testing these new green pipes called energy pipes if they don't break that's great news because not only will i have power again they actually transfer more energy up to 20,000 rf compared to the 2000 rf on the red pipes and so far it hasn't broke so that means i'm gonna start making these electric tracks for my builder train day 741 was a big day because i'm actually gonna make the rails for the builder train i had some difficulties building with this train because it didn't seem to accept any modded blocks which is kind of sad because i wanted to use this rainbow kind of block that goes beneath the rail so it looks all cool and everything i did a quick test with stone to see if it worked and it did look it's actually building and placing tracks that's insane and look the train is actually going it's drilling through the mountain and it's placing down rails and blocks i decided to go with birch wood on the bottom because it looks really good with the electric track and then just slabs on the top because it just looks good i literally just watched it for the rest of the day until it ran out of tracks because i don't know why it amazed me so much here's another deal yo those new energy pipes i put for my black hole reactor didn't break so that means i can replace it with everything the main pro of these is that they transfer 10 times more energy than the red pipe so that means everything's gonna be 10 times faster they require a lot of glowstone so 
I just mine glowstone all day. Day 745, since I had these new pipes, I wanted to hook them up to some quarries, but that means I need a lot more storage. I read through the comments and some guy suggested to use these storage crates because not only do they have more storage than my obsidian and diamond chests, they're actually way cheaper. They only cost wood. And I have infinite wood because of my farms down below. I have the storage now and the energy and it was time to hook them up to some new quarries. I set up two new quarries and look how fast it's going. Is that even normal? That is so fast. There used to be a limit of how much power these quarries could get because of the red pipes, but not anymore. I spent day 747 setting up another quarry and just cleaning up all the liquid around the base with the pumps because it doesn't look good. And I spent the entire next day just looking at the quarry's mind because I don't know why, but it's just so satisfying. Day 749, since everything was working fine, it's time to start working on my super smelter. I started creating a really big area here because this is where I'm going to have all my super big machines and epic automation stuff. I decided to go with four rows of 16 for the furnaces. That way it would just be all in one section, not spread out all the way throughout my base. The only problem is that how do I actually make a super smelter out of all these fast furnaces? I dabbled in creative a little bit to get something to work, but I'm not so sure if it's going to. Day 750, I didn't feel like building the super smelter yet. I wanted to go on an adventure. I had one more realm stone from Advent of Ascension that created this gold portal and it looked interesting. Yo, this place is creepy but awesome at the same time there were these dudes here that traded stuff for like weapons but i didn't have anything they wanted also it turns out you can't actually break any blocks in this dimension it just lights you on fire after doing some research turns out i need 10 gold coins in order to progress in this dimension which i don't have well since the new dimension didn't work for the next 12 days i'm gonna be fixing up this beano's mob farm because it's kind of a mess first step is actually adding the new energy pipe to it because it's like getting high speed internet for the mob grinder so that way more mobs spawn and I just get more stuff. The next step was just changing Beanos' glass. That way I could have mob spawners on the ground. I needed a mob that drops iron and gold. And one of my guesses was a mob from ore spawn called the Nightmare, which was just this flying creature. And since it flies, I had to put the mob spawner on the ground. That way it's killed right away. And hey, look, it worked. There he is. Oh, wait, he's not inside the cage. I repeat, he's not inside the cage. He hunted me throughout the castle and I knew I had to make some changes to the Beanos grind. The first step was actually expanding the area because I felt like I didn't have enough room to work with. I went with black colored stone brick because honestly, it just looks the best with all this mob grinder and all the other stuff. I also have to make Bina slightly larger because that's a problem if mobs are spawning outside of him. My next task was also to find some sort of machine that sucks up XP from all the dead mobs. My first attempt was this little machine that accidentally turned all the XP that I had into these tiny orbs. So that's not really what I was looking for. After doing some research, I learned what I needed. I needed a vacuum hopper and a vacuum chest. The vacuum chest will actually suck up all the items in a range, so I don't need all those vanilla hoppers anymore. And then the vacuum hopper will suck up all the XP, which is perfect, because then I can lead it to a tank outside the mob grinder. And it definitely worked. All the mob drops and all the XP were being sucked in. The final step was just fixing up Beanos. I made him happy this time, and it just looks 10 times better. And look, the XP was already being transferred into the liquid tanks. That means it's working. And now that I had the XP, I actually made a spawner that spawns this thing that drops tons of iron and gold. I mean like stupid amounts like my vacuum chest couldn't even keep up with it. So basically this mob grinder is done. I have mobs that are spawning. I'm collecting the items and their XP and with that XP I can craft up more mob spawners for stuff that I need. So I'm thinking the next one I would need is like a blaze spawner or an enderman spawner because I need ender pearls and blaze powder. Day 763 with my mob grinder done I made sure to feed up my energy generator and so quickly I already had stacks of iron and gold which was perfect because this means I can finish a lot of projects that I had stopped working on. This allows me to use iron and gold more freely to make more fancier metals that allows me to create more things for other mods. I spent the next day just adding some basic things next to my mob grinder like an enchantment table and some bookshelves. I also started placing in blocks for a path that I'll have on this floor but I didn't very much like it. Now that all of that is taken care of and I have a lot of iron this means I can finally work on my super smelter. I can make infinite hoppers now that I have infinite iron. I'll also be spending the next 10 days on this because it's kind of a long and tedious project. Basically what I'm creating right now are four layers of 16 of the super fast modded furnaces in a super smelter way. Let me explain. I'm using mumbo jumbo super smeltery design that evenly distributes coal and ores to all the furnaces. For example, I have 64 furnaces. So if I give the system 64 pieces of coal, 
it will give each furnace one piece of coal. Same goes with ore. Here's the problem. How do I actually do that? And how do I evenly do it so all four rows get it at the same time? There were no tutorials that I could follow, so I knew this wasn't the fastest way, but I mean, this is kind of what Minecraft is all about, right? I'm thinking on my own that involves a lot of these green pipes that should evenly distribute all the items, like, evenly? Basically, I had to connect each row of furnaces by itself to have its own green pipe that led to the input chest. After connecting everything, I put in a lot of coal in the system, and and it was already taking it, which is a good sign. But the coal wasn't going in any of the furnaces, so I started to freak out. But luckily, I found the problem right away. Turns out I just had the redstone on the wrong levels. Before I test it again, you gotta admit, this looks super cool. The white stone bricks looks... Mwah. And for the moment of truth, I put in about two stacks of coal. And no, oh, three, that's good. Nothing, that's not good. Two, that's great. And three, it kind of works. That's kind of good. I put in a lot more coal and it's kind of working. But the fact that I made this for my own brain, that's pretty big brain. Look at this. I put in like 10 stacks of cobblestone and at least 95% of them are turned on. Look how fast this is. This was after 10 seconds. It's good, but it's nowhere near perfect because there's a big problem with the design. Problem being the furnace smelts up the cobblestone way too fast before the hopper can actually give it another piece of cobblestone. So technically each furnace is only working at like 20%. Eh, whatever. It looks really cool and I'll fix it later. Day 775, I just did some fixes all around the base because there was always something broken. And since now I have a ton of iron and gold, I'm going to start making a lot of rails because I really want to get into the train craft. I just want to say that my base looks pretty cool. The next day I had a lot of rails and it's time to start putting them to use. The first thing I did was refill the auto train building track thing because that is actually going to build all the way to the swamp that's about a thousand blocks away. Now I need to build some sort of train station. And it wouldn't be a train station if I I didn't have multiple different paths the train could go on. I started building a path from the entrance of my base to the train station because I want to be able to reach anywhere in my base or anywhere by train because why not? The only thing that I haven't decided are the actual blocks going around the track because those colorful blocks do not look good. I spent the night going over different designs. The fact that I have so many options kind of hurts my brain. But finally, I got a design that I was like, hey, that's pretty good. I also had to build the track somewhere else so it actually connects with the entrance hall, which is really cool. The mod comes with these really large turning tracks which are really important especially if you go really high speeds on the train because then your train will actually fall off the track on day 780 i continue making the path look nice but it was kind of hard especially on the curved areas everything else was pretty easy and looked really good i also just realized why did i build this out of stairs you can't place railroad tracks on stairs <laughs> boom that's pretty cool next day i wanted the curved area to look better so i put up this tunnel design which kind of takes your concentration away from the ugly curved area i'm pretty happy with myself before before I build any further, it's important that I test out the track at least once with an actual train. Building this train was quite complicated because not only is it a tier 3 train, it was the fastest train in the mod that I know of. I finished it the day after and yo, am I proud of myself. I just built a high speed train and it looks pretty good. I couldn't drive it yet because none of the tracks were powered, which meant I had no power in my train. Day 783, before I power on the tracks, I just wanted to show how amazing this liquid XP tank is. I just right click it as many times as I want and it gives me the xp i also made a quick stop to my auto track builder that has built a long tunnel and i just refilled it so it could keep going again now to actually get power to the tracks i wanted to use a different power source so i used something from the same mod which was actually a windmill look how adorable it is and i knew right away that it was working because it was turning the electric track red i spent the rest of the day just waiting for the power to reach all the rest of the tracks day 784 was a really big day because we were gonna test out the high speed train ladies and gentlemen we're starting to pick up speed and we're actually moving we're going up the hill and we're going up fast and yo that was pretty cool well i would say that was a mission success but now i'm gonna take a break from trains for a while for the next nine days i'm gonna be working on my armory because i haven't touched up on that in a while I found this new block called energized void stone and it looked really cool plus the chiseled gave 16 more options of it it looks really cool but i don't think it's gonna work for my armory but i know i'm gonna use it for something but now the fun begins because we're gonna start working on this armory the first step is removing most of the grass because because there is way too much of it then throwing in a lot of variety blocks and i'm in love with this block it looks futuristic but at the same time it matches the nature theme i also wanted to add a roof so i actually had the feel of the room having this mega super smelter is amazing because then i can get so much stone and the roof begins which is also super satisfying i totally see it coming together now i just need to work on the left side and of course more light i started adding in some light sources by putting torches under green carpet and it did the trick that's seriously looking cool now just imagine all these armor stands actually 
actually filled with different types of armor. And now I have to replicate the same thing on the other side, which is actually kind of difficult. And voila, the overall armory is somewhat complete. I mean, it needs a lot of work, but <laughs> yeah. Day 794, I didn't want to work on the armory anymore, but I had a perfect idea where to put these purple blocks. These purple blocks go perfect with Beanos and the entire mob grinder level. And just look how fusion and futuristic they look. These blocks are perfect to create a path to go everywhere on this level because there's going to be a lot more things to add on top of the Beanos mob grinder. One word, yes. The next day with only five days remaining, I turned my mob grinder into an actual room. And I did that all night as well. And even the next day until it was done and it looked great. It's only three days remaining. I didn't want to start on any projects and have it cut off till next episode. Instead, I did a lot of maintenance all around the base. But congratulations for watching the entire video. You earned yourself eight gold stars. I have a lot of plans for 900 days and I still feel like I'm nowhere near completing my base. So I have a lot of projects in mind. On top of that, we still haven't even built other bases and other dimensions, which would be a seriously cool thing to do. Anyway, until next time.